Let's take a look at leak code question 21, merge two sorted lists. And this is a great question to be able to practice your linked list algorithms. You are given the heads of two sorted linked lists, list one and link list two. We need to merge the two lists into one sorted list. The list should be made by splicing together the nodes of the first two lists. Return the head of the merge linked list. Okay, so we've got this diagram here in the example. And the red is list one, the purple is list two. And they're sorted. So we need to combine them. So basically what we need to do is we need to take the number one here. If they're both equal, you can take either of the values. So then we keep the one. Then we go to the next iteration, which is three here. Um, and then for the first one, the next iteration is going to be two. So we take the smaller number two, and then we add that. And we do that until we get to the end of both of the lists. And then we get our ordered lists. So that's going to be the underlying algorithm that we're going to implement. And one thing to note is if the list is empty here, you can simply just return the other list because the other list, if you give back the head, it's already going to be a linked list. So it's already going to be sorted. And building on that, if you have a list that has just say one element and then this has three elements, after you've you know, cycled through all of these elements here, and then you're on the list that has remaining elements, you can simply point towards the next one. So if you had one here and one here, you add those to the new list, one and one, there's nothing left in this red list. So you can simply just point the new list, which is one, one, to the head here. And then since this is already a linked list, it will preserve that linked list structure. So let's take a look at the code here. So as I mentioned, we can have a look at the list one. And if that is not defined or it's null, we can go ahead and we can just return the other list. And if the other list is not defined, we can return the list one. And if either of those cases are true and or well, both those cases are true it has the catch or because it returns null and that's what it would be if you have no list there'll be nothing to give back so let's just go ahead and define a node because we need to create our own linked list based on the other two lists so we can create a list node by initializing the list node class and instantiating a object. And let's also keep track of the tail, which is also going to be a list node. And we're going to point that to the head. So we've created this list node with no arguments. And you can see if you take a look at the constructor here, it's going to initialize the value and the next to zero and null. So we're going to need to actually loop through all of our list elements. And basically what we can say is, well, firstly, if there's elements in both the list one and list two, we're going to need to do a comparison of the particular node that we're on and depending on the value is how we are going to append to our list. But if, you know, as I mentioned before, if one of the lists doesn't have a value, you can simply just point to the remaining um, list. So after we loop through everything. So we have this while loop here. So firstly, we're checking, we're looping through the elements when we have both a list one and list two. And then you can imagine at some point we might have elements in list one or we might have elements in list two and not the other. Um, in that case, 
what we can do is we can set the last node and the value of the last node either equal to list one or list two. So just to recap that, we haven't implemented the rest of the list, but you can imagine we've gone through our list already or both the lists and one of them becomes empty because we've um, merged it into our new list that we're returning. And basically on that new list that we're returning, we can say we can point the last value to the remaining elements in the last in the other list because it's at the end of the list and it's pointing to another list. So if that's undefined, we'll take the other list. So basically we can say, oh, and we want to, at the end of that, we want to return the next um, head element there. So basically if the list, if the list value, if the list one value is less than the list two value, that means we want to take the tail because we're going to have a ne next value. So initially there is no next value, but we can take, after we do this equality, we know that the list one value is less than the list two value. So we want to take the list one value, which means we can set the tail, which is initially equal to this head node here. We can set that equal to list one. So the tail or the, you know, this first element here, this is going to point to this smaller list value. So, or the node of that smaller value. And then we need to, since we've taken a node from list one, we need to cycle list one to the next value. So we can set list one equal to list one next. Now, if the list one value is not less, which means it's greater than or equal to, we can do the opposite of this. So we can just copy this code here and set this equal to list two. And then list two, we can go to the next node in the list. So the reason we can do it for greater than and equal to is because if the two nodes are going to be equal to one another, it doesn't matter which one we select. And let's say we select the first, the, a node from the first list, when we do the next iteration, it's going to have this check again. So we're not going to lose any uh, of our duplicated nodes there. So what we can say here is in either case, we want to set the tail equal to the tail next. And then we've got this case here, tail.next can be equal to the remaining elements here. And that's pretty much all we need there. So let's just have a think about the time complexity. The time complexity, well, we've got this while loop here. We're not allocating any memory. We're just reassigning things here. So the time complexity is going to be O of N and the space complexity. Oh, actually, sorry, we are, we got this head node here and we're basically using the tail, which is pointing towards the head. And then we're sort of looping through the tail to create our new node. So the space complexity is going to be O of N. So let's just do a quick recap of this. We've been given two lists and 
if either of the list is null, we return the other list. Otherwise, we need to create our own merged list. We start by having these variables here because we need to return the head node. So we create a node. And the head node in the first instance is going to be equal to the tail node because it's the first node. But we need to keep the head node because we need to keep track of the next values. And we're actually returning a pointer to the next element head here. So when we initialize this node here, we've got a node which is the value 0 and then pointing towards the next value and the tails point towards that. And then in this loop here, while we've got values or nodes in both the list one and list two, depending on if the value is less than or greater than or equal to, is we, we add a pointer here. So the next node here in the head, so in the first case, the next node is going to be equal to the first value here and then we loop through to the next node in that list and we do the same for the else case here and then in the tail here at the end here we need to increment the tail of our node because in either case we've added something to our new linked list here and for that particular element that we're on, we need to keep track of where we're on because it's not an array and we don't want to loop through it over and over again. So since we have a reference to the next value or the next node in the tail here, that means we'll keep track of the last element there. And we need that last element in because we're not guaranteed to um, loop through both of these. And in fact, we won't be able to loop through both of these at the same time. Uh, when I say that, we're not going to be able to end the list one and list two. There's going to be some remaining in either of the lists. And then because we have track of the last element there, we can put the next element onto the remaining list, which is defined. And then, of course, we can just return the head.next because the head.next is going to have all of our... is going to be the head of the linked list there, of the new linked list. And that's what the question wants us to return here. So let's go ahead and submit that. And we can see that that works nicely.